During an interview, Richard Feynman made a great analogy when talking about how we discover the laws of the universe when we're living in it through scientific discovery. Imagine looking at a game of chess. The gods are the ones who play on the chessboard. The chess table is the universe. You don't know the rules of the game. The gods don't communicate with you. What you can do, however, is observe the movements the gods make and figure out the rules of the game. You make observations for the movements in the game and then pass laws or rules of how you think the game works. So for instance, you look at the chess game and say, as a rule, the bishop always maintained its color. Then you watch a little more and reach a better understanding and that is, it moves on a diagonal. This brilliant analogy can serve as a foundation to the answer to that question. Was math invented or discovered? What exactly are we doing when we try to use math or understand the nature? Does math exist because we created it? Or does it already exist and we just understood and discovered it? My answer is that math was invented and not discovered. And here is why I think that. Looking at and observing natural phenomenon, we could describe it. To do so, we need tools to describe what we see and experience. And this could be any consistent, convenient code that we define well and communicate. This is the same as creating a language. For example, unless one of us is colorblind, we would all agree that this apple is red in color. But notice that the word red doesn't have any intrinsic qualities that describe anything. The order of the letters R, E, D, and the letters themselves, though may be derived and evolved like language does, is arbitrary and had no internal meaning. What we did is decided that it is a descriptive label to our experience of the color we see on apples when they reflect the light onto our eyes. It's also the case with all red objects. This is a lingual code in the English language and can be useful to communicate the experience of the color red with everyone that knows the code, i.e. speaks the language. I don't see that as very different to when we describe things that we see in the universe as we try to figure it out and understand the laws and rules that govern the majesty and sophistication of our world. Instead of creating a code for geographical regions, like language, we thankfully decided that the communication code of the universe needs to be universal and absolutely logically confined and consistent. And that is what math is. Math is a language that describes that universe or the language of the universe, like you'll often hear it said. Every formula communicates a message and conveys a specific concept and meaning. Those formulas can be translated to lingual sentences the same way languages translate from one another. This equation, for example, has a meaning that can be translated into plain English or any other language. Remember, None of the humans who ever existed has any access to any absolute truth, nor is absolute truth the concern or goal of science. The goal is to create a descriptive model that corresponds to reality and observation, and at the same time has predictive power. And that is done through observation, data collection, and verification by experiment. We all know, for example, that objects fall when we let them drop. We can drop objects and watch them, observe how they fall and when they fall. Then we can predict how and when the object will fall based on watching the previous ones. From then on we can pass laws, convey them with math, the universe precise language that we created, and that is what science is all about. The number one has no internal meaning. It is a figure to communicate the concept of unity or oneness. Now the concept of unity exists, but the number one is what we assign to this concept. And then what follows is from logic, two unities together make a duality. And the number two is what we use to communicate the concept of duality. And so on. If, starting from tomorrow, we decide to call the up direction down and the down direction up, things won't start to fly off the ground onto the sky. The names of these directions is arbitrary. So I say, languages wouldn't exist if we didn't, and nor will math. I highly recommend you watch Feynman talk about this, and I'll leave the link in the description below. 
subscribe for more and leave a like on this video and I'll see you next time.